I've played a lot of Resident Evil 2 in my life. It's my favourite game in the series, and definitely among my favourite games just in general. And while I've never speedran it in particular, I am someone who specialises in tank control survival horror speedruns, and I'm often besieged by comments from nefarious haters who say things like, But Punchy, survival horror speedruns are so boring, all you do is hold forward. Well I'll show them. I'll show you all. What if you could find a way to beat a game like that without pressing forward at all? In fact, today I ask, is it possible to complete Resident Evil 2 without taking a step? So let's address the first and most basic question raised by that premise. The obvious reply to that is something like, No, of course not, you idiot. How would you even move? Well, like this? No way. Is this the opposite of a speedrun? I think it might be, actually, yeah. I disagree. Now here's the kind of bad idea I can get behind. Word. Word, 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 word. It transpires that every single time you aim the handgun, your character shuffles forward. Ever so slightly. This allows you to achieve some basic form of forward locomotion despite not pressing forward or taking a step, and will be our bread and butter technique for moving across this run, even though the pace is, as you can see, quite laboured. Now, there are obviously a lot of further complications and complexities to this, and we will cross all of these bridges as we get to them throughout the video, but I wanted to start this by getting the most fundamental question out of the way early, so I can now back up and establish some context for why I even attempted this. It's important, I promise. Some years ago, I randomly stumbled onto this upload of a video titled Bayotsu Arukazu ni Kryo, which translates literally to pretty much the same thing I've got here on this video, Resident Evil 2 Cleared Without Walking? The video, in fact, depicts the same technique for movement as I've just outlined. This clip originates from Famitsu Wave DVD, a monthly Japanese gaming publication that ran through the 2000s and offshoot of the better-known weekly Famitsu. This is a very simple explanation that belies me losing probably like an actual full day of research just to trying to work that out because the initial upload did not contain any real leads on that and I am currently kind of annoyed as I write this because this video was meant to allow me to get away from something that required me to cook my brain researching stuff for hours in Japanese, but I failed and so here we are. Anyway, true to its name, Wave DVD shipped with a DVD that contains stuff like game interviews but pertinently to us, the Yarikomi Stadium. Yarikomi being Japanese for challenge run, roughly. These were solicited from the public, so players mailed in their most ridiculous challenge run, probably on actual VHS tapes or DVDs, because challenge gamers were incredibly hardcore back in the days before YouTube. You whippersnappers in your Twitch streams couldn't possibly compare, and if they were used in the magazine's DVD, the player could win prizes, although the main prize seemed to have just been points in, like, some kind of loyalty program. Seems kinda lame, I didn't press this for further info because seriously this video was not supposed to have a research phase. God damn it, dude. Get back to the video game. So this player, who is credited on the program by very probably their actual real name of Furusato Norimasa from the Aomori prefecture here, it could also be Kozato, I really have no way of knowing Japanese names are weird like that, took on this challenge and mailed in their tapes. However, because this was part of a segment of a larger show, it doesn't actually show the full run, only small bits of highlighted segments. In particular, it shows an end clear time of 10 hours, a figure I find highly suspect, but we'll get to that. This left me with many questions about how this run actually worked and was performed, and I figured the only way I was going to get satisfactory answers was to attempt it myself. So there's your context. I subjected myself to this absolutely agonizing playstyle because I was curious about an out-of-context segment of a Japanese program of some nebulous description I randomly glimpsed on YouTube once. I feel like there have been worse reasons for self-inflicted punishments in this world, but none really come to mind at the moment. Following suit like the player in the segment, I am picking Leon A and will be conducting this on the easy difficulty. I did try normal mode initially, and... It did not go well. I feel like normal mode might be possible anyway, but let's keep this challenge to the logistics of just simply the movement first. You have to learn to walk before you can- wait, we're not walking. Uh, you have to learn to shuffle but I'll forget it. So, basic rules. No pressing forward or backwards for movement. While back walking through all of RE2 would be vaguely funny, I feel the answer to the question of can you beat RE2 without pressing forward is probably an easy yes, I don't even think it'd be that hard. You can turn with left and right to steer the direction of your shuffle, but no forward and no backwards. Any action that causes incidental movement of your character are also fair game, so primarily aiming and re-aiming the gun to shuffle forward, but things like enemy attacks that move the player are fair game to exploit if you can manage it. There are multiple reasons for us picking Leon A for this challenge, and if you're a canny sort who knows a lot about Resident Evil 2, you might already be able to reason them ahead of time, 
but for now I will save them until the relevant parts of the run. Now, this entire run was performed over on my Twitch, at twitch.tv slash punchy, so that's why you're going to have to put up with my horrible mug in the corner of the footage. But now, let's actually embark on this journey of no steps. So, the iconic first screen. You're placed smack in the middle of a burning car wreck as a bunch of zombies try to eat your face. This initial scenario lays bare the first reality of this challenge. We move slower than every single enemy, but furthermore, the auto-aim will actively move you towards enemies if they're close enough for the auto-aim to latch onto. So in 99% of encounter scenarios, you simply have to stand your ground and fight, kill everything in the room before you can start slowly shuffling your way back out. And there's no way to turn off the auto-aim in the Japanese version, so you're just stuck like this? Except I think there's actually a cheat code for it, but I decided not to use it because cheat code kind of felt like it was going against the spirit of things. Also, I didn't know what the code was and didn't care. If you're playing an English version, I think this is something you can just toggle from the control options, but that's not what I played. So, fundamental reality number one is that a no-step challenge is also an all-kill challenge, because any time you get even vaguely near an enemy, Leon's bloodlust will force him to confront the foes in his path. Thus, we are forced to shoot everything to death before we can slowly shuffle onto Kendo. And this is where we face fundamental reality number two. This is slow as shit, man. From starting the game to simply entering Kendo, it takes a little over five full minutes in just raw movement. Just tapping R1 over and over again. This won't slowly wear on my sanity. Five minutes is a very normal amount of time it takes to finish the first three screens of Resident Evil 2, right? Right? Here, since we've got time, let me address something you might have already been wondering. I said I'm playing the Japanese version, but the text in the menus has been distinctly English. This is because I'm playing the Japanese exclusive Windows XP port, but with the fan-made Rebirth patch that makes it run nice on modern operating systems, and additionally has the ability to add back in the game's English localization. Just putting this up front, since YouTube comments take challenge runs extremely seriously, and I'll probably get called a hack fraud if I don't explain what's going on with that. Although, it is actually relevant to the challenge run, because Resident Evil 2 is one of those games with an absurd amount of minor regional differences. Like, a lot. Someone has almost certainly already made like a half hour video going into it in detail, but in short, items are placed more obviously, and enemies tend to both deal less damage and have less health, so that makes aspects of this challenge somewhat easier. Albeit the trade-off is that I don't get to turn off auto aim for any reason, and that is not a trivial downside, as we will get into. Feel free to argue in the comments about whether or not this run would be more or less legit if I did it on the American version or whatever. I went with the Japanese version. Deal with it. Anyway, we advance to Kendo. He gets eaten. I am forced to kill everything as this room is too small to escape the pull of the auto aim, but I am at least able to gain all of the ammo in the room and the shotgun, which will come in handy since, as we have now firmly established, I have to kill basically everything I get within rock throw distance of. Making our way to the basketball court, we run into the first instance of the inability to turn off auto aim working against me. I struggle to get around this corner just because the auto aim keeps latching onto enemies on the other side of the fence, but actually hitting them is a bit awkward from this position. If I could turn auto aim off, we would do the sensible thing and just advance until the trigger where the fence breaks open, but I can't do that, so methodical elimination it has to be. We advance past the basketball court and reach stairs, which Leon proceeds to boldly break the rules by rapidly stepping up the stairs, ending the challenge instantly. Sorry guys, can't be done. Stairs are in everything. Should have tried this challenge with RE3 instead, idiot. Alright, see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Check me out on Patreon and- Okay, no, of course not. We'll just have to say stairs don't count. Not much to be done for that. Things go pretty smoothly from here to the front of the bus. I fall for the oldest trick in the book. Am I auto aiming? <gasps> ah! It's alive! <laughs> I thought it was- I was auto-aiming onto something. <laughs> and make it to the police station, immediately causing a problem. All the zombies on the other side of the gate respawn and my auto-aim insists on latching onto it. So I pull out a secret technique I learned for this challenge and equip the knife. So while mashing the handgun aim makes you move forwards, the knife conversely actually makes you move backwards, so it's good for exactly this kind of situation. But I'm attacked by the two zombies in the little garden thing off to the side, causing this interaction to take place. Ah, what the fuck?! That was a real two-dude kind of situation. Hey, I can- there we go, it stopped. He gave me a boost! Turns out as soon as you get to this camera transition, the zombies behind the gate just kind of stop existing as far as the auto aim cares, so that's nice. I am now free to shuffle through the tunnel, which takes me five full minutes to cross this one room alone to the front of the RPD. I also finally put a timer on my footage. Should have done this from the start, but now at least you will have a sense of the time it takes me to simply cross rooms while playing this. Finally, we enter the RPD. 
I did it. I reached the police station. I beat the game. Woo! God damn it. No, of course not. We have like most of the rest of the game left. Joy. Abridging the keycard and Marvin cutscene because there's no enemies to fight here, we arrive at the first liquor. And something you may or may not know about liquors is that they're blind, and since we're only moving by shuffling, we make no footstep noises. Theoretically meaning we can bypass liquors entirely. No, oh, that's gotta go. It's gonna... Like, if it collides with you, that's a problem. I mean, I said theoretically. Realistically, evasion remains a non-option even in these situations. We proceed onwards, and one of the things that will happen when you do this challenge is you take a heightened interest in where you can and cannot be on the pre-rendered backgrounds. Mistakes. I'm trying to... Can I get behind the podium? Is that allowed? Is that legal? Is this a legal move in the game of Resident Evil 2? Holy shit! Game of the year. Advancing onto the statue puzzle, this is where we run into an edge case with the challenge because I kinda have to press forward to push these, but like, you don't really complete a step in the process. Would you consider this walking? I mean, you're, you're kind of going to have to let me have this one, because otherwise we just stop playing the game at this point, and I already did the fake credits gag once, I'm not doing it twice. We meet Claire, grab the second shotgun, I actually kind of forgot the game let you do this, and proceed to the spade key door. Fuck! The door is locked! Didn't actually grab the spade key yet though, idiot. Shuffle back out, get the spade key, go back. Ugh. One of the realities of this challenge is that I hope you remember your way around extremely well, because even small navigation mistakes like that become very costly time-wise when doing this. I know Resident Evil 2 pretty well, but I wouldn't say I have, like, the entire game committed to memory. Case in point. Did you guys even know you could shoot those? Because <laughs> I didn't! I've never tried to do that. That's one of the fun things about doing deeply bizarre challenges like this. It will force you to learn new things about a game you've already played a lot of. Look, it was new to me, alright? While traversing back and using the spade key, I kill time as I slowly navigate by talking about when single tweets of mine get turned into articles on major gaming publications. There's just an article that's like, I, I was like at work the other day killing time, it's like I saw fans uh, in a tough, I can't remember what the exact phrasing was. Fans in a tough about Tekken 8's new network test logo. And I looked at the article and I was like, hey, that person has the same avatar as me. Oh wait, that is me. <laughs> it was like, hang on, I'm the only tweet in this article. Like, did you mean fans or did you just mean me? It's like, I'm the only one quoted here. That is a single tweet article, bro. <laughs> to be clear, there's no malice in this anecdote. I know people like yelling at gaming publications. Please do not do that. I just thought it was funny. We acquire the Bishop Plug after slowly completing the library puzzle, which for those of you who are perhaps not as intimately familiar with RE2 as I am, is one of four key items Leon needs in order to leave the police station. This is as good a marker of progress as any, so we will say we are about a quarter of the way done. With the first half of the game. Approximately. Only took about 2 hours and 40 minutes. Looking speedy. Advancing through the crow hallway, which I was actually expecting to be more difficult to deal with, but I managed to land my shots on the crows pretty quickly and move on. We grab the valve handle, go all the way back, and meet with an interesting interaction in the helicopter crash hallway. Oh shit, he walked through the wall! <laughs> what the fuck?! Okay. Pure movement, nothing fancy here. We gain the king plug, putting us at two out of four plugs collected. However, while navigating back down through the first floor offices, I, uh, hit a problem. I think I actually just broke the game. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Are we okay? What's going on? My controller accidentally came unplugged while doing this, and this apparently happened in such a way as to render Leon stuck in the aiming position. Unable to move, I was forced to close the application and reboot. Losing all progress made since last save, setting me back hours of progress. A serious blow to the challenge. Nah, just kidding. I saved after getting the king plug, but I do lose all the time I spent moving back to the first floor office. In service to making up for lost time, I find the 2 times speed function baked into the fan patch I'm using for the PC port and make haste. You might consider this cheating, I would consider you tedious, but feel free to present your case in the comments anyway if you're so inclined. Diamond key in hand now, we can open up the evidence room pretty stress-free since I have killed everything in the building up to this point. Dudes! The dude economy is booming! No, the dude economy! It crashed just like that. That other zombie behind the cabinet will never find me here. He found me! Dude economics thus dealt with, we move on to dealing with Marvin. He takes a bite out of me, as you might expect, and we retrieve the heart key, which we consequently use to head into the basement. I fight the dogs in probably the least sensible position possible, being flanked on both sides, but somehow the act of my aiming keeps moving me out of the way of their jump fights, and I clear the fight with no damage taken at all. Huh. 
This is going kind of well, actually. No problems until activating the Ada cutscene, which I use as an opportunity to make myself a cup of tea, something I am entirely too thrilled about. Abridging a bunch of cutscenes, we were able to head down into the basement and enter the first room with the spiders. Spiders are kind of a pain in the ass to fight since they like to hang above the player, which can make the auto-aim freak out and further unluckiness strikes as I am insta-poisoned by the very first hit I receive. This especially sucks because since it's time-based, poison is basically guaranteed to put me on 1 HP every single time I receive it. Fortunately, poison can't kill me, and there's actually surprisingly few places in the entirety of RE2 where poison is even possible to get, but this is like one of three. Fortunately, the game provides a blue herb immediately after and the spiders don't respawn, so that threat is now dealt with. We retrieve our two plugs from the item box and go to cache them in the lock mechanism so we don't have to carry all four at the same time later, and coming back out triggering the transition to the Ada segment. So now we're controlling Ada. You might wonder if this comes with any changes to the movement. Answer? Not really. Ada still moves more or less the same way, just aiming her gun bit by bit. There is one catch, however. Yeah, I feel like Ada might actually be slower than Leon somehow. I don't know if that's true, but she feels slower. <laughs> oh no, this room is so big. Oh no. Bruh, she's slow. She's definitely slower. She's gotta be slower. Like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> Ada is somehow even slower than Leon. How is that even possible? How can you move a smaller unit than what we were moving at? Ada finds a way, and that's kind of impressive in its own way. Incidentally, this is one of the reasons we picked Leon A as our scenario for this run. Ada is still able to move by aiming, however in Claire's scenario you take control of Sherry instead as the secondary character, and she has no weapon. No weapon, no movement, so the challenge bricks for Claire at this point. Sorry Claire, better luck next time, should have picked a better sidekick. Ada's section itself goes smoothly, there's basically no enemies, albeit it takes me like 15 full minutes to cross like three rooms and claim the club key, which is longer than you'd hope, making it all the more upsetting when this happens. Uh... Just... <laughs> eternal throw! I think the fucking game crashed. <laughs> well, who's down for round two of the Ada shit guy? Nah, I fucking pranked him! It was just alt tab! <laughs> I'm sorry, I like screwing with my livestream chat and in turn screwing with you. Fearing karmic retribution, I immediately save the game despite not really doing anything, and now with the club key in hand, I have free run of the police station to seek the remaining two plugs. Coming back up through the basement, I take the opportunity to fight my way through the autopsy room to gain the key card I need to access some extra items that will be helpful, although I have some difficulty dealing with auto-aim due to an off-screen liquor. Yes! No! Auto-aim, why? <laughs> no, I wait- I- I- I waited for the liquor to walk away so auto-aim would stop- oh fuck. No, it's walking back! Oh shit, what do I do? No, it's gone again. It's gone again, it's okay. Get out of there. <laughs> what a tricky chestnut! Able to, for the first time in this run, actually bypass an enemy by just moving past it, I enter the weapon storage room and claim the submachine gun and the side pack. Normally the items you don't take are available in the B scenario, but since I have no intention of playing the B scenario this time, I'm able to selfishly hog both pieces of equipment. In the spirit of experimentation, we also try the movement of the submachine gun. Does this- this does actually move me forward. I am not sure it does so very quickly though. Sadly, submachine gun is not faster. It does move you though, but thought you might like to know that given the spirit of the challenge here. Submachine gun thus in hand, I'm able to clear out the liquor blocking my exit from the basement, we head to the room adjacent to the basement stairs that's unlocked with the club key we just gained and acquire the magnum. This will be extremely important, it's a highly powerful weapon which would be helpful since we can't really evade during boss fights so outputting a lot of damage quickly is naturally helpful, but that's not actually the magnum's true value in this challenge, more on that later. We enter into one of the handful of new rooms accessible via the club key and someone in chat points something out to me. His head is having a moment when he- Oh my god, you're right! His head does, like... What is that? Oh no, why did you point that out? That's gross. Oh no, ban that person, why would you point that out? <laughs> I can't unsee it- Oh, you've ruined this for me now. <laughs> why is it- It's like getting larger. Oh, it stopped. It stopped. Why does Leon do this? I'm honestly not sure. 
I think it's the game's attempts to make the player character look at what it deems to be interesting, but interacting really weirdly with the constant aiming. Either way, it's gross and I hate it, and I hate this chatter for pointing it out. Moving on from that, the Rook plug is obtained, putting us at 3 out of 4 plugs. I make quick work of the liquor that spawns in via the submachine gun, and I then solve the puzzle in the adjacent room to claim the cock. We now have everything we need to claim the final plug, so I navigate all the way back up to the clock tower, entirely unchallenged since I have laid waste to pretty much the entire police station at this point, and claim the final plug. Nothing stands between us now and leaving the police station, except the first boss. And the fact it took me 40 minutes to get all the way down here, and I've just sort of skipped over this in editing. My fight against the boss goes pretty smoothly, I basically just shoot the dude to death with the handgun from the starting position, but the real problem starts after the boss fight, where I can't advance forward due to his little spawns attracting the auto-aim, and they get too close to hit sometimes. And he spawns two extra in his dying throws, the cheeky git. Still, no deaths, and in a pretty good position, we rendezvous with Ada and enter the sewer's safe room. I take a detour into the secret warehouse behind the shelf, which honestly I didn't even know this room existed until planning this challenge. You have to, like, light the lamps on the wall to see what you're doing to pick up both items. It's worth it, because there's magnum and shotgun ammo down here, both of which are very important to our overall journey. Items collected, and about 6 hours and 40 minutes of stepless gameplay, we have made it to about the halfway point of the game, entering the sewers. The sewer starts with yet another Ada segment, so we're back to her extremely slow movement. Fortunately, I'm able to kill the first spider without issue. Getting poisoned as Ada here would pretty much guarantee a death given the upcoming segment and one of the potential pain points of the run. This tunnel. In this tunnel, you're attacked by a large number of cockroaches, and since auto-aim is bloodthirsty as ever, I have no choice but to attempt to shoot all of them individually. I didn't even know you could until attempting this, I figured this out pretty much as I went along. It's a scary segment too, because while the bugs don't individually deal very much damage, if large numbers of them jump at you at the same time, it is surprisingly possible to get killed very fast by these. I was honestly not sure if the playthrough was even going to be able to advance past this point, but either by luck or grit, I am able to pick them off individually one by one and advance through the problem point. No other enemies are present until the end of the Ada segment, so I simply proceed as usual until we snap back to Leon. Once again, I am forced to fight the problematic foe that is a spider directly above my head, and... Hmm. That's kind of a banal first death. The spider poisoned me on the very first hit, and I more or less just died instantly as a result. Poison's kinda lame. Like, not even in this challenge, just in general. But in this challenge in particular, getting poisoned basically turns the game into a state of needing to not get hit until you can locate a blue herb. On my second attempt, I take no chances and just blast them with the SMG, although the guy still manages to instantly poison me again on their very first hit, which is very unlucky. It's not guaranteed that getting hit by that projectile will cause poison, but so far, every single time it's happened, it's happened instantly. I cure it with a blue herb mix I save for just such an occasion, and then I'm unable to advance because the auto-aim is stuck trying to aim at the spider's corpse because you need to double-tap them even though they're definitely dead at this point, and the handgun just can't hit it. Something about the corpse floating in the water renders me unable to make this shot, no idea why. I had to use the submachine gun to finally hit the dude and become unstuck. Weird, man. We enter the next room and fight another pair of spiders. The first one is dealt with quickly. The second one lands a single drop on me, but I otherwise deal with it quickly thereafter. But you'll never guess, the single hit it landed also managed to instantly poison me. Great. So of the three rooms in the game with a poison-capable enemy, I managed to get poisoned on the first hit three out of three times. Great. Good. Loving this. Having a good time. Not mad in the slightest. Mercifully, the game provides me a planter of blue herbs after, and I burn one of my heels to bring myself back up to fine. Now, we've made it to the crocodile fight, which presents an interesting challenge. The ideal technique is to use a gas canister in the back part of the room to instantly kill him, but given our restrictive movement, that's basically not an option. However, you can actually just kill this boss by raw damage, but there's a time limit on doing so because you will die instantly if the boss manages to push you all the way back to the start of the room. But I thought about this in advance and brought the submachine gun to deal relentless damage. Ow. No! I was on orange health, boo! Okay, oops, that didn't go very well. Kinda my bad, I didn't heal, I was on orange health, I thought I could take the hit, turns out I couldn't. This is why games have the magic pixel, kids. Try again, we'll die the death. I'm gonna die the death. I'm dying the death! The death has been had. Damn it. Yeah, there's not enough firepower here. Bugger. The submachine gun just isn't cutting it, and neither is my heal amount. The croc is more damaging than I anticipated, so at a somewhat sizable time cost, I backtrack to the item box, bring out more heals and the shotgun, and retry. Someone in chat tells me that the boss should take about 17 handgun bullets per information on the wiki, so I give this next attempt a go with a pure enhanced handgun strategy. Ah! 
I'm saying this is a bit more than 17. Did the reload even go through properly? Dude! I'm very surprised that didn't kill me. I'll take it. Bit more than 17 handgun bullets, if you ask me, but I'll take it. Crocodile cleared. We're now able to proceed to the electronically locked door. Mm hmm. Reunite with Ada and loop back around. Zombies respawn in one of the rooms and me, being lazy and now extremely stingy with my remaining shotgun ammo, rely on Ada to solve my problems for me. Making it to the cable car, I abruptly remember that there is a forced attack sequence in said cable car, during which I will very likely take a lot of damage and have to power through with healing, since evasion isn't really in my vocabulary given the restrictions of this challenge, so I once again backtrack all the way to the box to retrieve healing items. Sacrificing 20 minutes of my real human life for good preparation, I challenge the set piece. Yo, I, I, I didn't need to backtrack at all. I found the safe spot. <laughs> it was that easy the whole time. Are you fucking serious? I backtracked all that way and got ready to just get smacked upside the head like six times, but I just like wriggled into a safe spot immediately. Come on, man. <laughs> Bruh. Bruh. <laughs> I just backtracked for like fucking 30 minutes. Talked about rhythm games and it didn't matter for shit. Well, at least it was safe. Coming out of the cable cart, we collect the weapon box key because this is actually extremely important for this challenge. We'll get to it in due time. Ada helps me kill zombies and I retrieve the shotgun upgrade parts, which will be a huge help against the late game enemies and upcoming bosses. And now, Birkin on the turntable platform. My strategy for this is pretty limited, it's basically just going to be a damage race, I have to hope I can just shoot the guy to death before he bounces my head off the steel. With no real plan in mind for this and zero research into health values or starting position, I give it a go. Is he going to start? Right in my face, this is very epic, and by that I mean this is very unepic. Ow. I'm okay. I think. Haha! -ha! Ow! Ow! That wasn't hard at all! You were all gassing. You know, I didn't remember this guy going down in like seven shotgun shots. Maybe the super shotgun is just that strong? I barely even used any of my reserve hour because I snuck in the cheeky reload by combining the shotgun parts mid-fight. Pro strats right there. We're now in the final area of the game, the lab. Which honestly kind of starts as it means to go on because the first 40 minutes is spent just turning the lights on where no enemies spawn at all. Auspicious. Lights now on, I can release the shutters and meet the ivies for the first time, except not actually because they don't even really manage to make it on screen before I kill them with the submachine gun because from the position I took their spit kept colliding with the wall or something. Either way, it worked out. I actually thought the ivies were a poison risk for the longest time, but apparently they can't actually do that on scenario A. Go figure. Anyway, we head into one of the lab rooms, and here I hit an unexpected problem. Aha! Sideways movement! Entering this room almost resulted in me getting stuck because the handgun was auto-aiming to the vines in the corner, causing me to get stuck on the bench. But by using my big brain and exploiting the shotgun aiming that actually moves you slightly sideways, I was able to make it through. Hadn't brought up the shotgun's properties until now because it just wasn't important. We take the flamethrower for more power and we turn on the gas. Supposedly this makes enemies weaker at the cost of creating poison ivies in the B scenario, but I'm not actually sure if the weaker enemy thing is true or works properly, I can never really tell. Did it anyway though, why not? 
Back out in the hallway, I test the flamethrower's movement. See how the s Oh, wow, the flamethrower produces a very large sideways movement. This is a very weird angle, but, like, that's not bad, actually. Like, that's- that's movement. That's something. Is the flamethrower actually fast? <laughs> I can't get to grips with this, like... This movement angle, though. It's very strange. It's like moving me forward to the... Oh, there's a guy. It's diagonal. But, like, I think it's actually faster than the handgun. I think this is actually fast. I still don't actually know if the flamethrower's movement is faster or not. I never timed it. I spent the rest of the run in a state of constant cope and second-guessing myself on whether or not the flamethrower or handgun is faster to move forward with. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna leave a note here for Editing Punchy to test this and get back to us with the answer so we have something more definitive for the final video. <clears throat> yes, hello. This is Editing Punchy here, so I did actually test this in post by way of timing how long it took me to get from one corner of this room to the other, and the handgun makes the trip in about four minutes, while the flamethrower got me out in a blistering two minutes and a half. So, confirmed, the flamethrower is definitely much faster for this. Another pro strat for the books. Advancing down to the lower levels, I take care of the liquors with the submachine gun. <laughs> I like how if you mash it, it just it plays without like any sound effects, so I'm just like, I'm hitting you with my mind! Yeah, so here's a bug you may or may not know about, but if you rapidly mash the fire button using the SMG, you can continually attack but not visually fire the gun, which is both funny and practical, because it also massively reduces the rate of ammo consumption. Very handy indeed. As we get into the safe room, I also stumble onto this realization. Oh wait, the super shotgun has the same movement arc. I don't need the flamethrower for that, the super shotgun does the trick too. Seems the super shotgun shares the same animation properties as the flamethrower, so you can also use that to move faster. Handy to know, since the super shoddy is available a lot earlier than the flamethrower is. We open the weapon box using the hidden key and claim the magnum part so we can later create the upgraded magnum, which will be very handy indeed. Clearing out the zombies and grabbing the key card, climbing back up to use it so we can grab the MO disc. We clear out the rest of the zombies in this room using our SMG mind bullets, and also claim the magnum rounds in this room, which I think gives me all of the magnum ammo it's possible to collect in a single playthrough. Remember that, it will matter. This leaves us basically unchallenged as we slowly shuffle our way back out to go fight the final boss. Yeah, the lab is kind of short. Always shorter than I remember it being for some reason. We backtrack to the item box and I make one last save to prepare for the challenges ahead. Entering the final boss room, the biggest problem area starts. Not the fight, no. This timer. Five minutes is all we get from here to finish the game. But that's okay, I have a cunning plan. Did you know the super shotgun actually knocks you backwards when you fire it? That's why I've been amassing so much shotgun ammo, but being so stingy about using it. My plan was to beat the timer with shotgun-powered movement. Movement! That's not very fast. Yeah, so that sucks, actually. It's not actually as fast as I thought it was. Um, hmm. Oops. That's okay. Plan B. Different, different tack. Different tack. Let's try it now, because I think I've already fucked up. <laughs> How far back does this launch you? That's comparable. That's movement. This is definitely movement. Propulsion! This is such a fucking waste of ammo. This is killing my soul! Now this is more like it. This actually works as a viable strategy, somehow. In the context of this challenge, while this is a painful waste of the game's most valuable ammo type, it's also probably the best possible usage of it, because we absolutely need all the help we can get here. I start the boss already a minute and a half down on the clock. Fortunately, first phase goes down in four point-blank shotgun blasts, pretty consistently too, it's a lot stronger than I thought. But phase two is the real challenge, as he immediately jumps all around, preventing me from getting clean hits. He then jumps around me and tosses me halfway across the room. But towards the elevator, which is actually good, this is where we want to be when the fight ends, so this is actually an extremely fortunate turn of luck. He goes down shortly thereafter, and I am left with two and a half minutes to make the escape. Is it enough? That's good, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good! Spacing, spacing, spacing! That's not enough time, bruv! You gotta hurry up with this shit! Brother, brother, go, man! Go! No, don't reload, there's no time for such behavior! Go, 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 go! We have two minutes to clear this fucking long ass hallway! Go, Leon! I'm out. I'm out of ammo. I'm out of ammo. I'm out of ammo. Now what? I just- I shuffle to the end? Do I have enough time? Is there enough time for this? <laughs> this is shit! This is so shit! Go! <laughs> Lol. There's not enough time. Failure! Yeah, I cheated and ran at the end. That wasn't gonna make it. It just wasn't. It might have looked close, but it wasn't. Just trust me on that, no. So that attempt was a bust, obviously. We don't let it end there, though. That would be a sucky conclusion. So 
I load my save and rethink my approach. I wasted a lot of time on that first attempt of trying to use the super shotgun, so surely if I'm just simply lucky and don't do that, we can make it. Sadly, my next few attempts don't go anywhere near as well with the positional luck, and the next three goes don't even make it out of either the boss or they die in the explosion. But on attempt seven, a chance emerges. The boss dies with three minutes on the clock, and a solid improvement with me very close to the elevator. This was very solidly executed and very lucky to boot. Surely this one can do it. Can't be done. That was the best attempt by far. It can't be done. Uh, nope. Still not close enough, and not by a small margin either. I'd need to save like 15 more seconds somehow to have enough time, and I just don't think you can find that time in this. And sadly, that was the best attempt I managed to get. I attempted an experimental attempt where I tried with the infinite ammo cheat on, and that made it with a minute and 20 to spare. So my conclusion of the challenge of can you beat RE2 without taking a step is... Technically, yes, but you need to be either using infinite ammo or be playing the Nintendo 64 randomizer mode or something which can generate hundreds of magnum bullets if you're lucky. The critical resource here is magnum ammo to be used for movement, but there just isn't enough of it in the whole game to make this work. But wait, hang on a moment, Punchy. Didn't you say this whole challenge was inspired by a guy on a Famitsu DVD? How did he deal with the finale? Let's check back in on that. Ah, well, yeah. He, uh, he also cracked at the final moment, unable to beat the final timer. I thought I was being clever with my Magnum shenanigans, but it turns out I ended up at the same conclusion that he did. This video also claims an end time of 10 hours, which, I don't know, man, I don't think this guy was being as strict as I am about it, because I haven't exactly screwed around that much, and I'm over 13 hours on the in-game timer here. Like, I'm sure 10 hours is possible, this wasn't exactly very optimized from me, but eh, I'm dubious on that. Anyway, I digress. I couldn't beat the end timer, the Famitsu guy couldn't beat the end timer, GG, can't win them more. Anyway, thanks for watching my video, if you enjoyed, like and subscribe and all- No, that sucks so bad, man, I can't end the video like that, let me just, let me, let me think about this, let me think, let me think. And so I did. While I wasn't able to clear the challenge on stream, I spent the next couple of days experimenting with different movement techniques, trying to find something, anything that could help me gain the edge and give this its much-needed closure. And eventually... And there it is. Beautiful. Resident Evil 2 completed without taking a step. What made the critical difference? Aiming direction, as it turns out. For some reason, firing the Magnum Ball aiming downwards results in a much larger movement backwards than when you're just aiming straight forward. No idea why, but this critical discovery made post-stream is what finally gave me enough of an edge to be able to clear. With that technique, winning against the time limit is actually pretty consistent. You don't even need particularly good luck on the final boss to make it. And so, with an end clear time of 13 hours and 34 minutes, I put this challenge to rest and claim moral superiority over a Famitsu DVD guy and his cheating at the end. That's right, guy on a nearly 20-year-old Japanese magazine. You're a fraud! You hear me? A fraud! I am the real deal! Woo! Hey, actually for real this time, thank you very much for watching this incredibly silly video. Like, no more fake-outs this time, That's we're actually done. The challenge is actually done. <laughs> we're good now. 
If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. Despite the toll this took on my stamina, it was fun to produce a challenge video for a change of pace. And I'm sure you all have ideas for other incredibly idiotic challenges in games like this, so by all means let me hear them in the comments, see if you guys can come up with anything interesting. Also, please consider supporting me on the Patreon, because these videos are time-consuming to make, this one in particular kind of taking a good bit longer than I thought it would. Link is in the description below. Hope you learned something new and interesting about Resident Evil 2 today. Hope to see you all next time, but on something that hopefully doesn't involve slowly shuffling for 13 hours. Thanks for watching!